It's big mess of stuff on the workbench time. This is Steve KM9G, and we're gonna do a firmware update on the QRP Labs QDX digital transceiver. That's actually kind of redundant. It's the QRP Labs is the Q, D is digital, X is transceiver. So it's the QRP Labs Q, D, X digital transceiver. I still like it, QDX digital transceiver. We're gonna need a couple of things for the firmware update. We're gonna need a USB printer cable. So those kind of ends on it. And if you have one of these things, you probably already have those because otherwise it's kind of pointless. Um, we're gonna need a power source. I've got this this fancy little device here that I picked up and we'll do a, another separate video on this, but this is this is pretty slick. Plug it in, set your voltage, and then plug your QDX, QDX into it. And then you're gonna need a computer with some software. So let me get the software uh, web page brought up and we'll get that all downloaded. All right, there will be a link in the description for the website down below, but I have got it right over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down firmware section. I don't even know what version mine came with. I guess we should check that out too. But I'm gonna go ahead and put the latest version of the firmware on here, 1.03. There's been a couple of pretty major improvements along the way. So we're just gonna go for it and put the big one on. So let's download this. And we want to download it. We'll go ahead and save it in the QDX folder. Hey, look, I already downloaded it. Open the folder up. And this is OS X. And on OS X, all you have to do is double click on a zip file and it extracts it into a folder in the current directory, uh, into a file in the current directory. Okay. And then on the QDX itself, there's a special power procedure you're supposed to go through. Um, plug the USB cable back in. And when you plug in your power cord, it's gonna blink pretty fast. Unplug it while it's blinking plug it back in, and then it's gonna blink pretty slow. It should show up as a USB flash drive. I'm waiting, looking. Huh, duh, this would really help. All right, hey, here we go. And there's a folder. And what you're supposed to do is drag this file over to this folder. And then it reboots itself. And now we have solid blinking lights. Okay, and then to verify that we've gotten the um, firmware done, we can unplug it, plug it back in, let it flash fast, plug it back in, let it flash slow, and then it shows up as a folder, and there it is. Let's see what's inside this file. All right, it says 103. Excellent, I think we got it done. And when I did it, it complained that I had removed the drive without properly ejecting it. I didn't actually remove it, the QDX removed it, so I'm gonna ignore that. Let's get this thing uh, plugged into an antenna and get it configured for WSJTX. We have WSJTX up and running and you can see it's decoding some stuff. Let me show you the magic that I set up in the manual for the QDX. It tells you to use a Kenwood TS440 or a Kenwood TS480. I did not have any luck at all with the TS440 for two reasons. Number one, the transceiver TS240, TS440 doesn't show up. I tried TS440S. Um, that one I could decode signals and I could do cat control, but I could not push to talk. So if you open up your uh, WSJTX and you go to the preferences menu, you'll get this window. It might come up on the general tab. It might come up on the radio tab. Here we are on the radio tab. And like I said, I picked the Kenwood TS480. That's what got it working for me. And on Mac OS, you're gonna see this devcu.usb modem. 146401. I don't know if that number is going to change for you or not. That's the number that I picked. Uh, there are a couple of other ports in here. I haven't tried the TTY USB modem, just the CU USB modem, and it works fine. So I'm, I don't really have any desire to try anything else. It is the CU modem 146401 for me. Uh, let me know if yours is any different. So that's the one that I picked. These settings right here, data bits, stop bits, handshake, etc technically don't matter because it's a USB serial device. And in the manual, it says you can pick any one of these. So I wouldn't worry about it. I set mine all to default and it's working. You can set yours all to default and it should work in the manual. He says to set them to other things and he goes on to say that it doesn't matter. 
pick one, go for it. That's all I'm saying. Um, PTT method is Vox, uh, transmit audio source. This doesn't have any bearing on anything in the world at all because there's only one place and that's USB. Um, mode, he's got these picked as none. Um, so I'll leave them as none. Test cat, and now it's not working. Let's pick them back to data packet. Test cat. Test cat. Okay. So yeah, it just didn't work at first. This polling interval, he says, set it up to 10 seconds because there isn't any way to get it to stop polling the radio, but there's also no controls on the radio outside of software. So you're not going to accidentally bump this. So polling the radio doesn't matter. And then test PTT and test PTT works. Excellent. Under audio, this is actually really simple. You pick QDX transceiver for the input and you pick QDX transceiver for the output. It doesn't get any easier than that. And then over here, you can see that I'm decoding some signals. I've got a bunch of stuff in the waterfall display down here. And I even was doing a little bit of CQ just to make sure it worked before I click the record button. So let's do enable TX on CQ. After we check a opening, we've got an opening. Let's enable TX. And so, like I said, I did this a couple of times before. Let me pull up the map. We'll take a look. I'm still in the middle of the calling CQ, but you can see I'm getting some pretty decent coverage at five watts. This is the Sunday of winter field day weekend. So the bands are pretty busy and I'm still being heard. That's good. Go back to WSJTX and see what it says. Oh, I got a contact. That's just amazing. And we got it. Uh, signal report sent, oh, it was plus 23 from me. Signal report sent was plus 23. Signal report received was minus 13. Minus 13 is still good. I'll take that all day long. This is not a POTA station. This is not the FT8 off. If you are interested in the FT8 off, come back to my channel or Ham Radio Dude's channel on Thursday. We try to make as many contacts as we can in an hour with a live scoreboard so you can tell where you stand in the rankings amongst competitors. Pretty fun evening. Uh, every Thursday night, 6.45 p.m. Central. Just go to YouTube and search FT8 off. You'll get tons of information about it. So let's go ahead and log this one here. And I'm going to be playing some WSJTX for a while. While I'm doing that, there is a video over here. Nope, over there that I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome.